So, all these little parts, this tube, I'm going to replace this fancy, fancy, heavy duty part. So, that's our plan for tonight. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, and welcome to building a track bar for the race truck. So, if you guys remember back, we put rack and pinion steering on the truck, um, we'll look under there in a second, and that is great lost a bunch of weight in the front end but in doing so we actually lost the mounting points for our track bar we'll go into exactly what a track bar is here in a second but needless to say we need to come up with a track bar because that's going to help to keep our axle and our frame centered and all that so if we look down here this big heavy duty bar we have here um it's not a factory track bar it's actually a carly track bar very heavy duty in my opinion when I had death wobble on my other truck, this is what took care of it. So we are replacing that with this uh, inch and a quarter, uh, 120 wall tube, couple of, uh, you know, left and a right three quarter hind joint, couple five eighths bolts, some five eighths to three quarter misalignment spacers, and some tabs to mount our bar too. So what did this bar do? Well, it's easiest to explain it in the back of the truck here. So, like I said, what it does is it keeps the axle and the frame kind of centered. So, if we look at our pan hard bar, which is, it does the same thing as a track bar. Honestly, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's just two, it's like two words for the same thing. Anyhow, we have a frame mounting point and we have a mounting point to the axle. So, what it does is it keeps the axle in place and allows the suspension to cycle. So as this spring compresses or it offloads, this thing's gonna pivot on either side and keep the frame just about where we want it. Now, the longer this bar is, the less side-to-side -side movement you'll have when it pivots. So if you had like a really short arm um, and this thing moved, you know, you'd just get a lot of sway back and forth. Honestly, with our drag truck, it's not a big deal, but that's what it does. It locates the axle to the frame, frame to the axle, what have you. The only problem is when we did our rack and pinion, we'll dive under the front end of the truck now. So looking under the front end of our truck um, at our beautiful, beautiful uh, rack and pinion setup. Very happy with how that turned out, that's for sure. Anyhow, our track bar originally went from this bracket right here that was our axle mount, and it came up over here, you know, came up around like the diff kind of, and up about where our steering shaft is to a mount that was on the frame. So, as you guys can see, our rack and pinion is quite a bit in the way of that. So I've looked at a bunch of different options and trying to figure this out, called a couple buddies of mine that have done stuff like this, and really, there's no good way to do it up front here. So we kind of have to go and hop back behind the axle to accomplish what we want to do and get a track bar installed on this thing. All right, so looking under the truck, um, we have a lot more room for activities, but with the oil pan of the engine up there, really not any good place to kind of just do a straight run like our track bar normally was or like our pan hard bar is in the rear so like i said i reached out to some people i know and hey how did you do this because i was coming up with all kinds of weird ideas trying to you know maybe build a bracket off the frame here and we'll you know whatever i was just trying to come up with all kinds of stuff making it way too difficult. And basically what my buddy, uh, Bodie, thank you if you watch this, I appreciate the uh, help. He said, just go diagonal. So what he was saying is you can go from like up there on the axle right there, and we can come back here to the back, you know, rear control arm mount. Or we could go from, you know, the rear control arm mount over there to the passenger side of the axle. And it will do the same thing. So our control arms are actually keeping the axle from going forward and backward. And even with a diagonal track bar, we will still be able to keep our axle where we want it. Now this thing is gonna have limited axle travel, so it's not that big a deal. Um, I shouldn't say, it. it probably is a big deal, but we're not gonna have the suspension cycling a ton. It's not like we're off-roading or something like that. So, what I came up with, what I figured was the best plan of action, um, was we're gonna go from underneath 
the front con front lower control arm mount here. We're going to put a plate right underneath there where that thing's open, and we're going to come diagonally across to our rear control arm mount on the passenger side. Doing that and going at this angle, we are actually going to miss our oil pan. So that was a consideration. Originally, I had considered going from here, this control arm mount, over to this side of the axle, because as you can see, plenty of room on an axle to weld stuff too. But when we do that, I feel as though we would come right across our oil pan, and I did not like that at all. So uh, that's one thing. These engines aren't centered in these trucks. They may appear that way when you look at them, but they're not in the center of the engine compartment. They are offset a little bit. So anyhow, that's my plan of attack. We're gonna come from over here, down there, and you know with that being attached to the axle we don't we're not gonna have to worry about our front drive shift we're not gonna have to worry about our oil pan everything should clear it and when we get it on there with our brackets and our hind joints i feel like it'll be just as low as the center of the diff so i don't think we're going to have a clearance problem there so what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a piece of plate on this lower control arm mount underneath there's a couple little uh tabs on there if you guys can see I'm gonna grind those off, we're gonna set up a plate, we'll kind of figure out how everything's gonna get mounted, tack things in and uh, go from there, get, get our bar kind of roughed in and all that. So it might be a little bit of a process trying to get everything where I want it, but we're gonna do the best we can, well, we're gonna get it done. We're not, there's no gonna do best we can. We're gonna get it done, it's gonna look good, it's gonna function well, it's gonna be just another step closer to having this thing ready to go. All right, so got our plate welded in here. Um, just kind of basically capped off this uh, lower control arm mount and put our two tabs on. They're just kind of tacked very loosely right there. I kind of eyeballed it to be quite honest. So I got that one done and then over here, I got, uh, uh, I got this one tacked in as well. We're gonna kind of go opposites with the hind joints. I don't think it should affect the movement because they're real tight, we have our misalignment spacers, all that, so I think everything should be good. Um, and then what we're gonna do is actually make our tube, and then we're gonna test fit it before I fully weld these in, make sure I like the angles and all that. Like I said, just kind of eyeball it. This one's not really a big deal because it will swivel this way. Um, and then down here, you know, we, we have our misalignment spacers, so I think we'll be a-okay, but just to make sure, I'll make our, our tube up, see how it looks and then we'll go to fully welding this but so far not too bad um the other thing i want to make sure is just that our angle is good like i said don't want to risk hitting our oil pan so we'll get our tube all made up which consists of our two hind joints are right and our left i've actually already set them so we have a quarter inch of thread sticking out so that'll give us a half inch of uh, adjustability smaller and then we'll have a bunch of adjustability because these things you know they kind of come down here as far as thread goes but from the center line of this to where the tube's going to sit is two and three quarters and we need a 40 a 40 and a half inch tube so we'll cut a 35 inch tube weld these on there actually i'll just tack these make sure i'm happy with everything and then we'll fully weld the whole kit and caboodle and our new aftermarket track bar should be done and I think it's going to be a little lighter than the one we took out so hopefully a little weight savings to boot.
All right, so guys, our new track bar is done. It's fully installed. I'm very happy with the result. Um, we have a nice long track bar um, going right to the bottom of that mount. If we look at our differential, it is about the same height, so it's not like we lost anything there. And then over here, we're looking good, clears everything. It clears the oil pan, no issues there. Um, it, you know, with the transmission, as far as getting it in and out, we just may have to pull it back a little further before we bring it down. Not really a big deal. That or just unbolt the track bar and, you know, drop that one side. So, yeah, very happy with it. Uh, once again, big thanks to my buddy Bodie for giving me the idea to go to the, with this diagonal route. Um, I was definitely thinking two in the box with it, just thinking of how the original track bar was and trying to replicate that. But I think this will do just fine and uh, very happy with how everything turned out. Also, I did weigh the track bar before I installed it. So, our Carly track bar that was in the truck weighed 17 pounds. Our new track bar that we just made weighs six pounds. So that's another 11 pounds off the truck, which is awesome. Um, if I remember right, we were 64 pounds lighter on the front end with doing the um, rack and pinion without counting the track bar. So that means that whole rack and pinion setup saved us 75 pounds. So that's awesome, 75 more pounds out of the race truck. Well, we already know about the 64, but another 11 pounds out of the race truck. So. Uh, you know, for something we had to redo, it needed to be done because we, you know, made other modifications. I'm very happy with the result. I don't think it's really going to cause any issues. You know, it's going to clear the oil, or clears the oil pan. It's looking good. It's lighter. Very happy with it. If we have to move the axle or anything, which even with the 35s, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, now, we may have a little bit of a limited turning radius with these things. I'm not really sure. That's the only thing I really didn't look at, um, but I'm not really worried about it. We're not gonna have to make any sharp turns when these are on the truck. But if we decide to move the axle and lower the truck or whatever, everything's adjustable. We got plenty of adjustment on our control arms, our track bar and all that stuff. So anyway, guys, moving forward with the truck, just getting more and more stuff dialed in, you know, just checking off all the little boxes, stuff that needs done. So hope you enjoyed, hope you liked the video. Please subscribe to the channel, like, the like the video hit the little bell notification icon so you know when i post videos do all that stuff but anyway get out in your garage get the wrenching on your truck